is half-life. Half-life is the time for half of the nuclei of a particular isotope to decay. We can measure this in three units. Mass, which is measured in grams, percentage, which we measure in percentage, and fractions. The half-life of an isotope is a constant. It is unaffected by any chemical or physical conditions. It does not change. In these examples, we want to calculate the half-life using a graph. So the question asks us to calculate the half-life of the sodium-24. What we first have to do is we look at the y-axis and we need to look at the value which is highest and has been plotted on the graph. We can see here that the mass of the sodium-24, which is present, is 8 grams at time zero. We know that the half-life is the time taken for the mass to half. So if we take 8 and it undergoes one half-life, that would give us 4 grams. So on the graph, on the y-axis, we'll circle 4. From here, we want to draw a line from 4 until we meet the curve. And then we want to extrapolate that down to the x-axis to identify the time. Now, because we don't have the number plotted on the x-axis, we have to be able to work out what the scale is. To do that, we first take the first two numbers on the x-axis and take them away from each other. We always do big numbers away from small numbers. So we do 20 minus 0, which means that we have 20. The second stage is to take that number and divide it by how many boxes we have between 0 and 20, which is 4. So we have 20 hours divided by 4 boxes, which means each box represents 5 hours. We can see on the x-axis it's 3 boxes along. 3 times 5 equals 15, so the half-life for sodium-24 is 15 hours. Example 2, it gives us a graph and it asks us to calculate the half-life of this source over a period of time. So what we can see is on the y-axis, that is where the activity is, and the highest number plotted on this graph is at 160. If 160 is the activity and it undergoes one half-life, half of 160 is equal to 80. What we want to do is we want to draw a line from 80 to where it meets the curve on the graph. And then we extrapolate that down to the x-axis. What we have to work out is uh, what each little box represents on the x-axis. So to do that, we take the first two numbers that are plotted on the x-axis, which are 0 and 5. 5 minus 0 equals 5. We divide that by how many boxes are between those two numbers, which is 5 boxes. So that means that 5 hours divided by 5 boxes means each little box represents 1 hour. Now, as we have one box after the 5 plotted on the x-axis, that means that the half-life of this source is a total of six hours. This third example wants us to calculate the half-life of technetium 99, and the unit we're working in is grams. So on the y-axis, the highest plot at time zero is one gram. If it undergoes one half-life, the half of the mass of one gram would give us a total of 0 0.5 grams. So we circle that on the y-axis. We draw a line from the 0 0.5 on the y-axis until we meet the curve, which is plotted on the graph. And then we extrapolate that down to the x-axis. What we can see is that gives us a time of six hours. So the half-life of this source is a total of six hours. <laughs> This past paper questions from the National 5 2017 written 5A. Phosphorus 32 is a radioisotope used in the detection of cancerous tumours. The graph shows how the percentage of phosphorus 32 in a sample changes over a period of time. Using the graph, calculate the half life in days of phosphorus 32. So at time zero, 
we have an original percentage of 100. If 100% undergoes one half life, that will give us a total of 50%. We then draw a line from 50 on our y-axis until we meet the curve which is plotted on the graph. And then we extrapolate that down to the x-axis. What we have to be able to work out is the scale what each little box on the x-axis represents. So to do that, we would do the two first numbers which have been plotted on the x-axis, which are 0 and 10. 10 minus 0 equals 10. If we count how many boxes are between those two numbers, there are 5. So we have a total of 10 days divided by 5 boxes, which means each little box represents 2 days. If we look at what we've plotted on this x-axis, we can see that the line is two boxes after 10. So that means that the half-life is a total of 14 days for phosphorus 32.